about halfway done, so if we want to get out in two hours, just be mindful of that in our discussions. Don't want to cut off any discussions, but just, just be mindful of that. So the next uh, section we're going to talk about is community education and outreach. And the first topic on that is veteran services program growth. And uh, Tom, you've got your Yeah, quick talk and I went to this thing and I'll already he can kick in at any, any time. But in this uh, veterans service all through selection process that uh, they had the uh, session on, they looked at it two ways. Okay, our main purpose is to provide service for our veterans. Make sure they get the services they're entitled to that apparently 49% of the veterans 49% of the veterans that are eligible for benefits don't get it. So they were talking about because how they don't ask. They don't either ask. Are no, no. your office is too far away? Are your vet service the veterans office doesn't know how to work and get around getting it? Some of the suggestions they they, they made one of them was that your vet service officer would be a veteran himself. He went through it, so that's what Ronnie and I talked about. That's the part of the whole thing, and I just we, yeah. And we thought we got we got a good veteran's office, and she's really up to date. Okay, we've got one coming on that you know learning, but I'll have to agree. You know, if you've been there and you've been through it, you've got a little more experience to it. So in the future, if we decide to get one, then that be a, might be a possibility to look at. Also, they looked at okay, not only providing services. But this is an economic development tool. For example, the one county that they showed for veteran service benefit paid out was $22 million for this one county. They figured after that money was paid out to the veterans, the amount that was reaped for the county was $52 million. Because that veteran gets his money, he spends it in the county, he uses it in the county, and I think they said for every dollar spent, reached seven dollars. They turned over seven times, so it actually go to seven hands. So this is why I think, and we talked and I agree that when we start to look for another veteran service officer, that we need to make sure that it's one that compassionate one that can get the money in. He gave me an example like this one guy called him and he said, look, what he from his county said that uh, I applied for veterans affair or whatever, they keep turning me down. He said, well, let's just talk. So he got to talking to the guy, the veterans, the board you serve, he told him, he said, Vietnam here? He said, yeah. He said, uh, would you ever be enough? He said, I was there for a couple of days or something like that. But anyway, the boots on the ground. And this guy was a veteran. He had enough money to say, hey, you got high blood pressure? He said, yeah. You got this, this, that, yeah, yeah. He said, all of these are symptoms made in orange. Hmm. He said, why well, just apply for veteran benefit, but file a claim against these things. And the guy was approved. You know, and, and things like that. And that, that what made me that uh, didn't really think about the effect of being an economic development draw. You take with 22 million, and the county winds up with 54 million dollars for the different jobs and different things. It makes it a profitable investment to have a qualified, good service officer, even if you got to pay them a little more to make sure. They can get the claim process, they can get the claim through, and they can help our veterans and give them the service they're entitled to. In return, then the county can make something off of it. That's John, what you're saying is basically uh, uh, the economic development impact I was telling you about that nobody's ever even thought about mm -hmm. coming through the veterans. And there's a website. And I've been trying to find it through this liaison officer, but you, you've got a video, but you can't, you can't see it. But you can actually go in and click on Cleveland County, and it'll tell you how many veterans are here, how many veterans are being served. And it will tell you the benefits that, 
that are, that are coming to Cleveland County to those veterans. And one one thing that Johnny and I saw before this county even had a veteran service officer, they uh, a lot of people wouldn't go because it was 100 miles away. But the benefit when they finally put one in, they went from servicing their veterans and getting uh, like 12 million dollars a year for their veterans. And the, and the last physical year, uh, there was like uh, 24 million yeah. Yeah. impact. impact. So, um, also that you have dates on this this website, and you can go back to like say 1970 where we did not have a veteran service officer, and the, the vets were going to Gastonia, the vets were going uh, up to OT and wherever, seeing veteran service officers. Well, you can go from where we hired Carol, gave her an office. You can look at those dates up to today's date, and you can see the economic impact from not having an office to having an office. And uh, we're getting more and more veterans in Cleveland County, and uh, I think they, they spend full time just with two of them. There. And, uh, but uh, again, it just kind of, uh, like Johnny said, you got to have somebody that's passionate for the job because there's always a way you can go around to find find something if you're willing to do it. But um, um, and I, I I just had no idea in my mind that that uh, there was an economic impact on uh, Cleveland County uh, from money that's coming from the federal government in that area. Right, the people that are working in those offices and the veterans train them on all the services so, so they the should association. they should be responsible for, for when they somebody comes in there and give them the right guidance of what to do and where to go, right? They they they, they should and they do get training, but I think what a couple of the guys with the national group was saying that even though you can take a person and train them, if you've been through it, you know what you're looking for, you're more apt be more passionate. Oh, I agree. I wasn't out with it. I'm just wondering. more passionate, to you're, going, you're going to keep trying, keep trying, just like the guy said. Hey, they could have given up on the one guy and said, okay. Hey. VA said, you're not eligible. But he went that extra mile because he was a veteran himself. He said, I'm going to see what I can actually, I'm going to do something to try to get you in there regardless of what it is. And he got the door open and uh, they wound up that, that this guy was actually disabled, homeless, didn't have nowhere to stay, they finally wound up, got him a place to stay, got him a home, got him a, about $2,500 a month. Now he's a productive citizen, spending that money in the community. We've all, got good people. We've all talked about veterans. I know everybody, um, everybody here is passionate about wanting to serve our veterans and give back to those, those that have served the country. Um, I, I guess one question I've got, it, it sounds to me the first statistic you mentioned, 49% of veterans don't get the benefits they deserve. But I, I would think that in Cleveland County, it, it could be that a lot of people don't realize the, the resource. Nice. Yeah, nice. right. But in Cleveland County, no. I would say that a lot of people don't realize the resource that, that we've got in the county with our veterans I think, office. I don't know that we would have been. Our statistics is not like that. Carrie told us, Marty had asked her for some information. She got it, it's in our box. Okay. And we didn't bring it, but our, our service officer, she's compassionate. You can yeah. win I know for a fact. And I have <coughs> talked to people that didn't have any idea they could qualify for any benefits at all. And they go and say, I'll talk to Carol the next thing you know. They qualify because it's all in terms of, hey, I went through this, this is what happened to me. You know, you've got maybe a possibility, you know, so forth. Just like we talked about your dad. Your dad should have been down there. Well, he, uh, okay. and, going back to, to, to my question, because my dad went because you told me yeah. of what you did. And, and my dad went and it, and it helped him. And he was, I mean, he's uh, uh, got partial disability because of his military service. But my question is, I mean, and this is something where I'm, I'm trying to think how we can use an existing service that we provide or something we're doing now, maybe where we can piggyback on them and get the message out about the, ben the, the benefit that our veterans have got. 
but we do things like, and I don't know if we can, but when we mail out our, our tax bills, you know, um, can we put a stuffer in there saying, hey, you know, you've got, um, we, you know, if you're a veteran or if you know a veteran that lives in Cleveland County, you know, they've got a resource there and, and, and uh, tell them where, where they can call or who they can call or, or um, tell them to come see Carol. Or sure, sure. My concern is Carol's going to retire, you know, and I was talking to her today. She's, she's lost her hearing in her right ear. Mm -hmm. So she's got a handicap and she's talking about retiring. And, you know, I know the girl is there and, and I have no doubt that she's not going to pass it, but to come to the point of replacing that and we really need to be involved or at least have a couple of veterans, somebody with veterans council or somebody sit down with Jeff when you start looking at these people and you start interviewing going through and so we can try to get somebody that is well, very compassionate. You know, most people don't understand that um, that veteran service officers that we have are paid by the county. There's no state I think 14, we get fourteen thousand dollars a year to the state. We get that now. It's, it's I thought they canceled it. Yeah, it's no, they did. We get fourteen thousand. It's pretty year. amazing because uh, she works the World Series. It, it's uh, it's pretty amazing to see the number of veterans that go up to see her at the World Series. Oh yeah, I mean Carol. Carol's the super. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying Carol's not fast. I'm saying when we get ready to get another, we need somebody. As is passionate as Carol. Yeah. You know, yeah. the kid be very important, I say, with, with looking at these numbers. I'm like, Ronnie, it's it surprised me to talk about, hey, let's look at this from a different perspective. Let's look at it through economic development. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's Just getting get word out to the veteran. But yeah, I'll say what they were talking about is a lot of veterans went unfurled <coughs> because, one, they didn't think they qualify and number two they had to go like 100 miles or so to see a veteran service officer and so they didn't wouldn't make the trip they wouldn't make the trip because they didn't think they were going to get anything to begin with and uh, that's where we're i think better off than a lot of counties is that we recognize the veterans um we pay for a pound for two people with no one from one to one and a half to two and, and uh, there's going to be more veterans coming in. We don't we don't ask what county you're from when, when you come in the set of the Carol T process. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. And two, you know, they've got a new uh, house bill. The Fed up in Washington. It's house bill HR 4810, I believe. And it, it addresses this long waiting period. Or with over 40 miles away from a facility for, for getting care, but right now it's, it went from the house to the Senate, so it's all in the Senate. So. I, I mean, I, we didn't get to see the actual numbers for Cleveland County. I'd like to see them. No, uh, Carrie downloaded them and they're in our box. Yes. Good discussion. Is there any, anything else on the Better Service Program? Right. Yes, ordinarily, uh, there's, as, as uh, Commissioner Hutchins pointed out, and as a, the board knows, I was just trying to look to see if I had the Veterans uh, Department of Budget, and I just can't put my hands on it. Carol, Carol gave me that information. Excellent. Yeah. So, somebody asked me if it's 14000 It's 14000 so Carol gave me that. She told me when I talked to her the other day that uh, we were getting about 10 at one time and been cut to about 5. Well, the figure she gave me an ask was 14. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. long we get, the long, long the state's given us a little bit, but yeah. the other doesn't run that off. Well, the state, and what the state does is uh, they give it to us so that way if a vet comes in from another area, then you've got to process them. So it's not just county lines. So they're more or less a regional, and we understand that we're grouped in a region. And it said here something about uh, I thought I saw something in the mail. Man, this been thing about something to do with. Mike, you're looking at that, John. Let me just say too is, um, and I know this is one of Carrie's sore, sore points, and, and uh, 
I'm going to bring it up to Dota too. <laughs> we got a bad website. Bad website. That, that's on this association, the 24 State Department of Association. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are. You know, <laughs> when we got back the other day, I, look, I tried to find Veterans Administration, Veterans Services. Now we got quick links to, whatever you call it, to a bunch of stuff, but they, there's not a quick link to Veterans. And if you go under County Departments, there's no Veterans Service. Everything Department. you're there. Easy. Unless you hit all, and then you got to go back down, and then it has this in black and white, and even that information is wrong. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Jeff, I was going to say several things. One, exploring opportunities to increase veteran services is is one of the commissioner's goals. It's in your current it's in your current uh, strategic goals under community education and veteran service outreach. Two things I've heard you talk about this afternoon. One is there needs to be a high level of attention with a two-person office and, and Carol's uh, upcoming retirement, there needs to be high level of attention on replacing that person with a highly qualified candidate. Uh, that's a county position. Uh, uh, that position would be recruited and hired on uh, through the Human Resources Department. That would happen this fall with Mr. Cross leaving in the wintertime. And, that would, and, and Carrie would be the key hiring manager for that position. So it would be carrier work with human resources. We can uh, move forward on that. I think our goal would be to hire and replace prior to Carol's departure so that we actually, for a short period of time, go from two to three people as opposed to two to one and then back to two. And uh, that's been our plan, was to accelerate that, to hire a replacement before Carol leaves because it would be concerning to go to a one-person office even for a short period of time because I think you can see a lapse in services. Is there any other expectation on that hiring process that the commissioners have that Carrie and I need to be aware of? Is there anything regarding the hiring of that position that you are, are expecting from us so that we don't uh, mess up with your expectations? Go through the North Carolina the National Association of Veteran Service Officers Good. and see if they have Good criteria. Yeah. Good. Excellent. That's the kind of guidance, and, and we really appreciate that. That's yeah, good. And both of our guys are members. Perfect. Yeah, and, and make sure that they got a compassion and that all of the failed look for you. Veteran. Yeah, veteran, veteran preference. Me and Johnny go down and be the first one to pick on them and not have known who we are and pick on them. That's your CPS compassion. CPS compassion. So they give you a wheelchair uh, walker and uh, yeah. one of those emergency things. Can I mention something? I got you know, brought up a while ago. Is, you know, do you think it'd be appropriate? I think it would be to ask, um, ask Jeff to maybe sit in with one of the Veterans Council meetings and just say, hey, this is something that's come out. If, if, you've, got, if you've got specific concerns, maybe you can talk to the Veterans Council and they can just kind of. And this is a conversation, not sure. not sure. you've got it. It's and that leads me to give them the opportunity to know, hey, we all are curious about yes. this, advertise what the user is, the point, hey, put the word out. Yes, sir. Okay. That's the guidance I need, and I appreciate this. I appreciate you giving us those kind of specifics. That's very helpful to us. I do need a quick link on the website. Okay. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I you found the website. Huh. On our website, he's saying we need a oh, quick yeah. link on our website. It, 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 in terms of growing services for veterans, one of the things that Carrie and I had talked about was emphasizing that as an area for our grants writer to look for. Once our grants writer is hired over this year, that's probably an idea that came from one of the commissioners, but and that is, let's emphasize with our grants writer looking for programs that are out there that we might can attach to, non-county dollars that are out there, or things that we might qualify for that we don't know, but grant opportunities that would bring more uh, services and or programs locally to the county. So that's something that can be an emphasis for us as well. Um, again, I'd like to go back to, to the mailing thing and something that I sure. mentioned several times before. I think that if we, if we were to look at, I think you mail out five pieces of uh, eight and a half by paper for the same price you can send to. Um, you don't want to water down a message coming from the county when you're looking at things like taxes and things like that. But if there's a way that we can provide our, uh, that we can cut expenses by maybe doing combined mailings um, uh, between departments, 
and if we've got some space and all look where we can send out something about veteran services or something like that, uh, you know, a nice professional looking piece that, that uh, the people pay attention to. I personally I'd like to see student. I can enlarge on it just a little bit now. Chris can help. Basically the only mailing we have is going to be the tax time. That that's certainly the largest single mailing we have uh, a couple smaller mailings of uh, listing forms you talk about it around fifteen thousand pieces whereas the, the tax bills uh, about thirty eight thousand envelopes we combine where we can but about thirty eight thousand envelopes. But you got well, a lot of board of elections too, that sends yeah, out. What I was getting to, I guess, and I'll just build on your idea, is this Cedar King Mountain shall be all sent out with utility bills. Mm -hmm. And if you have this little thing going there, now that's going to hit the major municipalities. It ain't going to hit the county, but we don't hit the county, not going to be hit as much as the Well, we, can, we, we could do that. that. We could do that with the Upper Cleveland Water. So they, they, they cover a large area and in history pilots, you know, between Bowen Springs, you and King Mountain, you've got what seventy percent of the people. Mm -hmm. And it, so that, that would be a good thing. And also Carrie just mentioned to me that uh, we could always check the register of deeds and send everybody's pilot to you two fourteen form. We could find out how many people we have in the county if we if it depend on how far you wanted to go. But or when they when they file it, the registered deeds office can give them the information to go down the hall. Mm -hmm. That might be an idea. I think I think both of you young veterans, okay, they know. They were talking about the area that they're missing most is Vietnam to Afghanistan. That that period there, some of the old World War II and Korean vets, they didn't file for benefits that they were held before, but the most of World War II vets were gone. So you do have some Korean vets and Vietnam vets, but that's the area now, here and now that, uh, that's not filing. It's more the, the younger vets. And just like we're talking about the younger, younger generations looking, you know, they're more inclined to, with the computer system and so forth. So they're picking up on it more so and that's older guys, you know. <laughs> and unfortunately, the thing about it is, is that um, if, if you don't apply, you're not going to be able to. Yeah, yeah. And if you do apply, from the date that you applied is when the benefits are awarded. They don't go back like 10, 20 years. It's from the date that you apply and are awarded the benefits. My hearing disability was on my like, 224. 214. I never filed for it until I was 65 years old. <laughs> From 20 years old to that, I could have been getting paid and got nothing. Mine's, mine's 40 years. Yeah. So that's what we're saying that. Uh, well, I could not file for it. They're not going to tell you. I could not file for it when I got out of the service until I filed for it a couple of years ago. I would have had 40, 40 years of benefits um, that I missed out on because they don't, they don't look back before they don't, they don't look back, so just from the day you found. <coughs> now, if you, for another example, if you go and file for benefits and have not heard that um, you've been approved or anything, and say uh, it's a year or two and you die, they go back to that filing date and they can get to you. Yeah, they, they approve it. They approve it. They it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it, 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 I never looked at it as an economic development job, but it is. Well, it touches, it touches our lives in a bunch of different ways. So appreciate y'all bringing that up. <laughs> Next item is uh, public relations education of county staff, and that's Ronnie and Johnny. I know a lot of this information is another old brain platform. Yeah, that's another one of the uh, classes we work on. Actually, this is developed by our own association here in North Carolina, Todd McKee, who is the uh, 
communications officer for uh, the North County Board of County Commission. And what Johnny and I were talking about, I think we had the conversation with Kerry and Gail. Uh, basically, what this, uh, what Todd has developed is the way that we communicate what we know uh, to uh, the press, for example, and the, the manners that you need to use and communicate that information. And you'd be surprised uh, from some of the films that they were showing how some of our public representatives act to press and, and, and just regular citizens. So what we want to do is see if we can get Todd to come and I was looking to have our staff and us kind of look at it. Um, and I'm going to give you the best example. Um, and I'm trying to figure out who used to be represented and used to be on the uh, North Carolina, uh, what's, the, what's the North Carolina school that's all in that big? School, school of government? government? Yeah, yeah. Board of Governors, whatever. School, school, school of government. government. Bob Etheridge. Mm -hmm. And how um, he, must, he must have had a bad air day or something. How he had coasted uh, a citizen who was trying to ask him a question. Of course, he came up to lose the election after that. <laughs> but uh, then he showed another guy that uh, he said uh, he, he had a cookie in his mouth, beaten cookie. And he just turned around. I mean, this is a video. You know, everybody's got a camera out there. And he said something like, can you not say I'm eating my damn food? <laughs> <laughs> and so we all can communicate with each other better. And this is the first way that people come down and can kind of talk about it a little bit. Yeah, and, and oh, but that, that's what, that's what, yeah, and it's all good talk. That's, that's one thing, you know, I think we'll be able to see your own person and convince you don't have one. You give an example of sometimes no statement is a wrong statement to make. You know, that you need to coordinate and keep talking. Especially with the uh, social media we've got out there, like Ronnie said, everybody's got a camera, everybody's got this. And it was a good, good thing to put on it. I think Kerry's already looked into maybe having it for the county or anyone in we fight in. And uh, he was doing something with Kego that particular night. So, with the recommendation, she's already, she's already working on that. But I just thought it was very interesting and also being developed. It's kind of like when I walked in that in Morgan uh, that time. I was sitting there and they were speaking about it and they started talking about Cleveland County and the Little Grand Center. I said, what? <laughs> I mean, I, I was outside the door today, I had to choose between two meetings. And I, so I just stepped in there, and the whole presentation was on the Grand Center in Green, Greenville. So, uh, so if, I, if I understand correctly, you've already talked to Kerry, and we're looking at Kago, have a talk come down and. Not only Kago, but we, 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 we suggested for all county department heads, employees, have a session for them to set through this. And I, she suggested that night. Is him do a watered down version for Kago since it's, we can all have it on the same day right down here. He may not go as much in detail with that on account of the time frame. Uh, it's an hour and a half, two hours. And the people would have been at time, they, they would have run on out, but he had to he had to quit to go to another so another session could come in. Can uh, can I ask this? I mean because uh, just, just trying to figure out how the logistics and who would need to be in front of a meeting like that. Um, what would it be possible to have any department heads that the county manager felt like would be possibly in front of a, a camera or in front of a meeting? I think, I think, what, I think what Todd's saying is not maybe you and I that does it, and it's somebody down the line that holds a supervisor position that the media may approach. So I, I, I think I think the department head themselves has probably heard a lot of it, but we may not be up to get it. Well, what I've learned is, would it be appropriate to invite 
uh, and invite them to the cater meeting and have one meeting. Yeah, he carried his own communicating with him and he said he got to come out. Two of them were there, a shorter version of that. Yeah. You're not going to get the full effects of it in a 15 to an hour. There's a lot of people that, that out there that are not going to be talking to. I mean, because they're always going to reference if somebody approaches them, they yeah. need to go to the county manager or go to the county commissioner. So you have to be careful who needs to be in on it. That's the whole key to the thing is to try to get all the people that you think we'd say nothing. How many times we wound up quoted in the newspaper from somebody, who is that person? <laughs> you know, why did they say it? You know, that, that's the key to the whole thing is you know, people sitting around the table generally know what's going on, but uh, you need to relate it to a, a lot of different people sometimes. And what time basically the same is an appropriate way to communicate? Yeah. I think it brings back maybe a thought to, to, to maybe we could revisit our, our policies that we've got now uh, for employee policies um, and, and the procedures uh, when, when and if things happen, what, what the policies are for those. I think that would be a, a, a precursor to who to decide needs to be at this, this type of, of training. Um, personally, I, I think that would, that would make sense to do, and, and I would. Uh, I'm it, it's out there. It's a great opportunity for us to get whoever we can, as many as we can, in on the session. That was really good. Okay. So that's in the work now as far as scheduling and all that. Any other discussion on that? Okay. Next item is being use of the court square. Now we've got to decide that. Okay, I was asked a question the other day that someone wouldn't have a wedding. They couldn't put a tin up on the court house <coughs> square property because it was too big or I, I really don't know what you know what they said. So Carrie and him said, Well, we're checking into it. I said, Well, this might be a good discussion to have amongst us because you were there when I was asked the same question. And I think some of the things was that uh, damaging the courthouse square or whatever. And even if, when I done the checking myself, and even instead of 10 by 10, 10 up on the courthouse square, we don't even require anyone to check to make sure that the uh, fighter system any lighting systems or anything in the area before they drive the, the stakes. So that's, I guess, come into play when I'm checking into this thing, you know, and in the event that we allow tents at all. There should be a way to check to make sure that whoever's setting a little tent up, a big tent up, what? They don't damage the sprinkler system, water system, whatever. So I don't know. Uh, just to throw it out, you know, what size tent you say can be set up and what size you don't because you definitely don't want enough, nothing on the east side of the entrance of the scrub center to affect the entrance of that that would have to be on the other, other section. And two, if we had to have someone to go and mark out for whatever tent that are being set up now, then it's going to have to be some sort of fee for it. Because I think the guy that puts the sprinkler system in takes care of it, he's probably the only one that knows where the system's at. But now, any of the tents are put up at random, basically. So you take this spot, this spot, this spot. And uh, just like in your house, if you don't know what's underneath it, you know. So, uh. Could be a good definition. Yeah. Uh, you do know that um, uh, the fire marshal answer is a lot better on this part, too. Mm -hmm. Technically, you're not supposed to have any tent prep out there that's not got a fire extinguisher and not a uh, fire retardant. I think the individual that asked us about has got fire retarded tents and puts there just to hold out. 
what I understand lady called, or they called for permission to put a tent up for a wedding. And what he explained to us is they didn't have the facilities upstairs and they override, am I correct what I'm saying? An override because we never allowed a big tent for whatever reason. He said, you know, we just don't allow it. So that's the question coming to me. Why not? You know, and Carrie said, well, we let pop up tents go up. I said, well, I got a 24 with 24 and it's a pop up. You know, the 10 to 10, you know, 40, you know. Yeah, and I know what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, if I think we need to look into um, the usage of those drugs and what the needs are from the, of there because if they're going to have events there that they, and that's what they're, you know, that's another profitable way for them to make money, um, they're going to also have times that some of that needs to filter out into the, in the yard. So we may be hindering them from having some events because they don't have, have space. I think it's what we probably need to look at and just make sure that it's being put up we have guidelines yeah we actually um we have had for a long time some requirements mm -hmm. for people that use the courts where um last friday i met with skip warwick who does the landscaping and emily Beckley, um just so we could kind of look and, and figure out how how we could make this work because like we all know i mean we want it to be used it's going to actually you know, bring more people uptown, you know, say somebody has a wedding, they may, after the wedding, go get something to eat or have a drink at a, at a restaurant or something like that. So what, what we sort of come up with on, on our first, um, first stab at it was to actually, especially on the bigger tents, have Skip put permanent, like, stakeholders in the ground. And basically on the bigger tent, this is the only place that the tent can be. And that way, the permanent stakeholders are there um, for any time someone wants to use it. We also talked about um, doing permanent stakeholders on the corners for, you know, because sometimes people want to use those banners up there, um, which they have to ask us for. But we do call Skip typically and tell somebody before you put anything like that, that up. We don't do that on the 10 by 10 tents, but we do on banners and things like that. So another thing we talked about is, is putting permanent holders in there and you know our maintenance department could come out and even put the poles in and then all they'd have to do is tie their banners on so that was another suggestion we had um one thing right now we have in our our requirements is a, a maximum of 100 chairs um on the court square you know we talked about there's really no reason for that i mean you're going to have a wedding you could have 200 people there so we talked about changing that to you know unlimited basically on tables and chairs um you know, because we, yeah, but even if people, some people have a wedding but don't have a tent. I mean, they just line them up there, but, but we just all, we've had some of these requirements there for a long time. But, you know, even Skip said, you know, the purpose of it, we want to keep it beautiful, but we also want it to be used. So um, if we're prohibiting people from using it, then that's not a good thing. But um, a couple of things that where I need guidance on from you guys is, you know, one thing that was brought up was to possibly um, require a damage deposit. Um, you know, char charge, not so much. I mean, if you all say, I want you to charge people to use it, we can charge people. But we thought more along the lines of $100, $200 damage deposit. If anything happens, if nothing happens, then they get their money back. So those are the kind of things that we um, were looking for some guidance on. Uh, if I do think it sounds like everybody's in agreement that we want to encourage people to use it. So I think our first thing right now is the tent issue. Um, if everybody here is, is in agreement to give you directions that you're fine with the big tent, we'll work it out with Skip and the um, tent vendor to do that for this one wedding. Um, but what, what I'd like to do is um, basically put all the information that we gathered at this meeting including the whole damage deposit thing into this document and then bring it before you guys for formal approval um, at a later date if that's okay. Another thing we talked about was basically putting a diagram together um, that showed, you know, this is where you can put a tent, this like inflatables. Yeah, inflatables was another thing. You know, uh, there's certain times of year where they seed up there. They don't want inflatables up there for two days after they've seeded the lawn. 
So we talked about, you know, inflatables can be used on the concrete surfaces any time, but if it's, um, you know, going to be on the grass, then it, it has to be approved depending on the time of the year and that kind of thing. Uh, somewhere in that says that you can't put anything on the, uh, the concrete areas. Mm, I'll have to look at yeah, that. Yeah, somewhere because... Well, we may have to change it. <laughs> Are those guidelines that you're Somewhere, that you're they they come up now? Like really uh, okay. Are those were those approved at a commissioner's meeting or were they just Not are those really. guidelines set? I mean like guidelines that the that maybe our uh, working with DCC and maybe our, our county Yeah, I maintenance. think these were just set a few years ago and okay. if and if you give us directions for us to set it, I mean that's fine with us too, but it but it sounds like the space itself is is a space where you guys get calls about. So, um, you know, if, if, you, if, if you think that it's more appropriate for you all to approve it, then, then we're fine with that too. We just need some direction. Uh, I'm more, uh, like what John is saying is, uh, I mean, they don't use it, but I'm more worried about uh, not just giving an example of like driving states and driving to the power or the you know, sprinkler system. Uh, I know Jason don't want to hear this. At one time, we had a company that was actually put a tent up in the cemetery and they're driving stakes down like in the center of a grave for a hole in the tent. And the point on the stake was hitting the vault and cracking the vault. Oh, wow. So they went very deep enough in the morning. So they still on the edge. Yeah. And then a lot of them might put the tent up and then I was there. I think what you're saying is right. I think it's a sort of purpose. For example, if you we put a deposit piece, okay, for the tin whatever, even for the ten by ten, are you gonna Make a deposit fee for ten to ten, but you're gonna have the festivity group to come in and put up a yeah. deposit for everybody. I would say the event. The event coordinator, coordinator mm -hmm. would, would put it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what my my recommendation. But then again, yeah. to recuperate the money, to make sure that uh, if you got ten to ten, you got to pick out and make sure where they go every time, and we got to get somebody up there then they should bear the expense of that. But if some way to set it up in the market, say this is the only place you can put a 10 by 10. Not really the 10 by 10, it's more of the bigger, bigger things. Well, ten. the 10 by 10 with the uh, space they drive to, could get your uh, spray percentage. Yeah. Yeah. What make it simpler is just uh, have a fee charge, I skip go up and show them where you can well, put whatever size. That's what I was saying, that the event coordinators, you know, if he's going to do it, then I think they Someone needs to cover his expenses because he's going to charge up for it. Well, the tents on the, the large tents aren't going to fit certain areas. Oh, so they're not, not going to have to check it out. Yeah, so I think what, and, and the skip's pretty good in that kind of stuff. So it's probably already got figured out. The areas that sound like he wants to go ahead and just put fun. And it may be the area he put it in the tent, but no flapper system. Yeah. But I think if there's any fee associated with him laying it out for the event, then. Let them. Let them. Well, so I, 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 I hate to see us do anything to, to, to hinder somebody from being able to use out there. And, and you know, you know, for most events and things, that, you know, spending a hundred dollars for a, a damage waiver or something might not be a big deal. But there'll be some that that, that will be a big deal for. You know, I'm thinking like, you know, if the scouts want to come out there, and do that. I mean, they've got to raise that money from somewhere. So. I, I'd like to see us come up to the most of the vendors up there are selling stuff anyway. They're retail or aquatic vendors. But I see you'll have something you'll have something you can. I mean that don't sell things up there. For instance, you know, if you've got uh, I know we have had uh, adoption clinics up there where where people have, you know, adopted animals up there. Um, there's there's some things like that that might we'll be I'll just suggest us to get a carry work with um, yeah, and come back. Yeah, come back. Whatever it is, yeah. Maybe a hundred bucks for a public event, DJ or or something like that. You know, and it may be a certain need to put out. You know exactly, but the overlay, there's I, nothing there. Yeah, I don't think he personally is that concerned about the smaller tents, but but that we'll talk about that again and, and see what he yeah. what he suggests we put in here, and I'll bring it back to you guys. Yeah. 
testimony of these regular meetings. Sounds good. Any other discussion on that? All right. Under fiscal sustainability, um, I've got you for. So it's like I've got the only two one. <laughs> you're, you're in only two. I'm going to so. make it short because this is just an ask for recommendation. Uh, some of the employees are talking about maybe possibilities of a birthday off. And my thinking is, is we have a reward and two rate for the last couple of years, 2%. And I just want to throw out to make sure there's a possibility would, would we like for someone to look into it. For example, if we choose to give a birthday off, it's not a day they can make, it's a day they got to take. I think uh, HR probably knows more about that than some areas where they've had before a birthday off. That it's, uh, if, if you don't take it, you know, you got to schedule whatever, but it can't be banked. They're looking at what it costs, what it have on us, what effect would it have on us, can we do it or not, you know. I just, it, and if we're, you know, not the consensus of the commitment, then there's no use going through the time of trouble. I have a little uh, add on to that. I've been talking to Jeff about it, but I, I'm the problem with giving a birthday off. Yeah. And uh, I don't think it's going to bankrupt the county to do that. But like you say, don't bank the time. You mean you take it, take it, don't you? Take yeah. It. Yeah. But um, something I want to see done for, or can be done for uh, our employees. And I talked to Jeff about it a little bit. I think I mentioned several of y'all, but I think that those employees who want to better themselves should be able to go over to Cleveland Community College and, and, and the county pay for their uh, classes. Uh, I, gave, I think John gave you an example. Of we have an electrical assistant in maintenance, and they really want to take classes in electrical uh, work. And if they can earn a license, they will help them to help the county. The downside is if they get a license, we probably lose them. But plumbing, electrical, which is all part of the, what the community college does in training. But uh, I know we can't do all county employees at one time. But what we can do is we say, we start out one year and say the first 50 who want to go do it, like some of the, some of the secretaries might want to go take classes in PowerPoint or Excel, some might want to do electrical, some might want to do plumbing, and give them that ability, and that, because they're going to have to step out, because the thing about it is if they work in a day job, they like to do doing this on their own time, and it. <coughs> but um, I just wanted to see if, if you're talking about a day off for them, I'm talking about this is another way to get that. But that be, yeah, that'd be, something, that'd be something you look at perfect with your job. Say, if I'm a secretary and want to be able to become a plumber, then that's outside of my field. We're looking, and that's just a question, we're looking for something to enhance them in their field. I, I don't have a problem with that. If, if they're working in Carrie's office and she wants to learn, if Carrie wants to learn more about uh, Excel, yeah. she would have known I take classes. Yeah, we pay for classes. If we got somebody in the electrical department who wants to, I mean, he might be working for yeah. his electrical license, but the thing about it, while he's learning, he or she is learning, it's going to fit the county. Well, could we ask the, um, the staff to, to evaluate what an impact is? I guess of the number of people, historical data tells you about what percentage takes advantage of pursuing education. Um, to see what the impact that would be on us, and then also the impact of um, a county employee um, having a day off. I'm not sure a birthday, because that's, that's, that's kind of hard to manage if you have three people um, and it could be a call, it could be called a day. discretionary day. But just see what the, the impact would be on the county. But, you know, we've already set the budget for this year, and just kind of look at what, you know, is it something that's affordable? into the budget for next year. But to, yeah. to piggyback on what Susan's saying, what, what, uh, it seems like it would be a, a good thing. We, all of our, all, I mean, all the commissioners by our, I mean, our county staff, I mean, they're, they're, we've got uh, great uh, employees here. Would it, would this uh, make sense for us to ask uh, our HR to look at our, 
the benefits package that we're offering to our county employees and compare those against um, counties our size across the state, maybe our neighboring counties, and make sure that we're we're doing right by the employees. And we, we have already done our budget for this year and, and bring back to us and say, you know, this is something that you ought to consider as a uh, as either an enhancement to your package or maybe this is where we're doing better than what others are doing. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't uh, personally care what other counties are doing. I've got a, a follow-up question there. If we're going to make a comparison, you know, we will be on the very downside if we start comparing salaries yeah. with uh, others because I have looked at some of the salaries. We are below salary for some of them. And, and that's exactly what the only thing I asked is we, may be we, we, had, we had three commissioners at least that they look at it. If it's a good idea, if it's not, you know, yeah. then can, can it, you know, if it's nothing to say we have or have, you know, do it. And I think with Ronnie's suggestion too, that probably the college would give the county special rates, special rates because... Well, you know, even in the private sector, John, we do that at community college. Garden Webb does that for employees. There's a lot, a lot of institutions across the state does that for employees. I think you, and, and it's the interpretation is whether or not you're, you're enhancing your field is to be considered, but to also some people do it because they want, they want, they're just interested in woodworking and, yeah. they, and they have, they, they never have had any training. So that some people go just to take something outside yeah. of what they're feeling. I think that's a, something the county would have to decide. But I'd, I'd be strongly in favor of considering it and working toward it maybe in the next budget year because I think it, it gives an employee an opportunity to improve their yeah, I, I don't think anything we well, okay. do I'm not done in this budget year is something we don't start looking now. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And I agree. I think it needs to be looked at for next budget year. And I'm not saying that we need to be we need to mirror what other counties are saying are doing around us. We may find things that a surrounding county is doing that's an innovative way of rewarding our employees for doing a great job that we hadn't thought about. Uh, so I mean let's look at I think it's a good idea for us to look and see what they're offering. Sure. We don't have to do what they're doing. I, I know but quite a few of the employees like the extra time off when they didn't give a break, especially some of the um, ladies that's got children with working and trying to coordinate things. So a lot of, a lot of those extra time off where they can utilize it. So there's a, yeah, I'm just saying let's look at it. Yeah, Allison and Jeff will love me for this. Uh, how, how long has it been? Since our present salaries program has been in place. Oh, right after it, it has not been done since I'm county commissioner, so it has to be more than 10 years ago. And when it was done, the information came back that it would take a million and a half dollars to bring us up then. And that's a million and a half dollars annually. I just wonder what the reason I said that. I just wonder if, uh, and I know this takes a lot of time, but I, I just wonder how our pay system is relative to other counties' comparable size and structure, and, and whether or not ours needs, like a better word, modernizing any at all, or, or evaluating and making some well, adjustments. I actually, I actually did that in uh, my chairman of the pool. Um, we found out that a lot of, that there a lot of transfers all over the school system, and what had happened is, is like uh, finance at that time was the uh, highest paid position, and then they, they didn't like in finance, they didn't go back to being a sector at one of the schools, but the pay stayed with them. Ooh. So the disparity kind of got way off, mm -hmm. and so what we, we did, we actually had everybody write job descriptions and compare their job descriptions say who was doing what. And then what we did <coughs> is that um, right, we have a job description and same, same number of years, uh, same position, same job description, 
at two different salary levels. So what we did at that particular time, we took the higher amount for that position and we held them harmless while we paid the one that was making lower to bring them up to that job description. Sure. But like I say, it, I think it's a million and a half something to do something like that. But, um, but it's not fair to pay um, someone that's doing the same job a different yeah. salary when they got the same amount of time. Yeah. And uh, so, um, oh, we, we, I got beat up bad. Yeah, that's, that's but, after, but after it was all, everybody got called up, everybody was on the same page. Well, you know, one thing, I think, you know, this, this is me, and, and I'd ask for some numbers, and, and I, I'm going to try to get the numbers close. But we've got all the step promotion pros, yeah. okay? That's keeping our employees' salary down, especially from the new hire to the top. And, and at some point in time, we're going to have to say, okay, we've got to open these step processes up, regardless of how we stand overall in the marketplace. Because I do know that uh, we've lost some people, and, and they were deputies, because of the step process was being held up, that they can go to work for a flight. We lost two of them to Boston City, we lost two to somewhere else that the salaries there that they've already started going through the step process. And uh, just like, what was it, 400 and some? That's, that sounds like yeah. a pretty, 400 and some employees out of 700 that when we froze the step process, they just sat there. They, uh, they, they, they moved up in their performance and the pay has stayed down. There was 275 of them new hires, and those are the ones that we're losing because we had some new hires, and they're still at the basic salary, and they got four, five, six years in to employment that are moving to other places because of that. And we were talking about doing a survey, that would be good to see <laughs> what it would cost us to start that process again next year to maybe look at that to have it for the budget cycle to see if it's even feasible if we can afford it. I think we started that when you were I think Johnny the thing about it is uh, we won't like what Chris was saying we won't have any kind of comments about the rebound and what that's going to do to us before we do the next budget. Well, that, that, this is not for the rebound. This is for just. Uh, I mean, but we want to have much money we really going to have. Rebound. Yeah, we don't have much that's additional. We knew how much additional income we would have, but that's just three million dollars over what we had because we had new businesses. So we we can estimate how much revenue over expenditures this year or next year to have nothing to do with the rebound. It's just in general operation because. Anything we do, we have to sustain it regardless of where taxes go up or down, whatever, if, if we choose to do it that sure. way. Have we, have we done any work on this yet, or have you got any comments on this topic? In January, when you did your 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 priority setting in the uh, Alexander Conference Room over at the County Avenue building, when you were there that evening, we talked about the fact that it was not affordable to be able to turn the pay system back on as it's currently designed, and we talked right. about that. We gave you the data in terms of the 700 plus employees, where they are in the system, how the system was designed a number of years ago, the amount percentage that's between steps. The Human Resources Department did that analysis, and, it, and you quickly conclude with the amount of revenue growth that we've got in the county, that the system as it's designed today is not affordable if we continue to grow in terms of our revenue growth at the pace that we've grown for the last several years. And you're exactly right. This is this is not contemplating what 2016 rebound may do, but just looking over the last couple of years at our economic growth, we, we're not able to afford just basically taking that system and turning it back on. And from that January retreat, the staff asked you if the Human Resources Department could go away examine the pay plan that we've got today that's frozen and come back just prior to the budget process so it would be late fall early winter to say 
Here are some things that you can consider doing next budget year that we might be able to afford. And I don't know what that would look like at this point. You asked if there was any work being done. Uh, one of the reasons that I asked Allison to come today was I thought this issue might come up. And I said, please come. And she and her staff have been working uh, since the fall because she was at the fall retreat last fall. And she and I have met several times. And she's beginning to look and see what kind of data is out there and see what's across the state. She belongs to a listserv with all the county HR people across the state trying to see what other folks are doing. Counties share information openly. But I say all that, Mr. Chair, and, and certainly Allison is here to elaborate, but I say all that to say that we are examining what we might be able to afford to do and come back to you late fall, early winter. Also, we'll have some early budget numbers that we can look at too to see what our growth, our continued growth looks like. Chris and I are working. Kristen and Chris and I, Kristen Fletcher and Chris and I, the finance director, are beginning to work more uh, closely on making sure that we stay, stay on top of our revenue growth, our economic incentives, and seeing how all of that affects our budget. So it's a long way of saying we're working on it. We would like to be able to come back in the winter. Uh, I think Commissioner, Commissioner Hutchins' comments about the sensitivity of keeping the pay plan frozen and the effect that that's having on our workforce, that, that, that is, that's, a, that's a real life issue. And, and Allison and her team deal with it in various ways every day. Allison, is there anything that you would share with the group that I've not that, that I've not hit on that would help the group? Um, I would say y'all are all dead on as far as you know the problems that that we're facing right now, and we are taking a look at it. And I think it even comes to some of the things that you were talking about, Johnny, as far as um, the desire to potentially offer some additional benefits that relate to tuition reimbursement as far as um, you know becoming a um, or having a culture that values learning um, and then that in turn adds to a high performance culture basically so it kind of all really ties in together everything that you're talking about as far as tuition reimbursement and um, do, you, do you reward for high performance or do you have a step system? What do you need to do? And, and we're starting right now to take a look at what others are doing and um, how they went through the whole process. Um, so we absolutely will have some information for you. Well, I think personally this, this is a, a huge morale thing as far as county employees are concerned. And even the point that one thing I think should be in the equation is if an employee goes to improve their skills that ought to be taken into consideration I think about does it move them up another level or how many hours does it take of enhancing their skills to move them up uh, I just for the last two or three years I've just scratched my head and wondered if we didn't really need to re-examine our pay scale and I'm not an HR expert but I know I wouldn't like to be locked in at one level for 10 years and not be able to, that's not much motivation or much loyalty really shown from the county, much motivation for the employee. Uh, if we can, if we I can think, I think make some change. I think you have to answer that question in the past. That's where we had the various increases that each year, one of say so forth, and put out so much merit increase, and that's where. If an individual does his or her evaluation properly, that they lay out go to meet, and as they meet them go the next time, that's where they enhance for the salary increase. I'm glad to hear you say this because that's one time to talk about the fact that looking at some sort of modification program, if we can sustain it. I know that uh, one time the steps were. 4.8 and it went to half step 2.4 and even at the point if you had to go down and some other modification point at least look and see if we think we can afford something and put something in place so because I do know a lot of people have been moved into a certain position and they're working for less money and someone sitting next to them doing the same thing and you know and it's not every time that uh, seniority may be the same or less. Mm -hmm. 
That is just the way they were hit when the system took place and we had no other choice, I understand. And I'm glad to hear that uh, we did. We, 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 we take this discussion seriously. And uh, there, I, I, I'm not an authority on it, uh, but I don't think there are easy answers. I think cities and counties across North Carolina, to some degree, are having this discussion. Cities and counties across the state. We gave a 2% raise in the past budget. I was very thankful and appreciative of the board's support. The average in Western North Carolina was 2.3%. So cities and counties across Western North Carolina gave an average of 2.3, we gave two. We worked hard to be able to give two, but when you look at the benchmark of 2.3, that's three-tenths of a percent that we lost. And when you take the two and you back it up against the index, the index was somewhere between one and two percent. And so really and truly, it was more of a cost of living in uh, cost of living uh, uh, award as opposed to a pay raise. And, and I know we all know that. And so the, the, the pay is somewhat stagnant. Uh, it is a com common uh, discussion that I'm having in the workforce with employees when I talk to employees and they open up is I'm concerned about my pay and my lack of growth in pay and I hear that with regularity and I understand that. Uh, we will examine it seriously. I'm extremely excited to hear some of the, the, the proactive discussions like about tuition reimbursement and things like that. In the organization that I worked in previously we had tuition reimbursement for 16 years and there was a waiting list every year for <coughs> seven years. And so employees truly value being able to go back to school at night and learn and, and get more, have more for <coughs> education. And we've got great school systems in, in, in this, uh, the, the greater area. You've got Gardner Webb, Cleveland Community College, UNC Charlotte. We'd love to be able to support that. And I think, again, as Allison said, that's a part of the big picture of what are we doing to help our people uh, grow. And so we'll continue to pursue this. And we appreciate your support and, and, are, and are hopeful that later this year we'll be able to come to you with some ideas for you to consider with the budget and not try to give you things that really and truly we don't have any way to afford. One thing that gives me some, some encouragement in this discussion is you know, past performance of our HR department dealing with, with our, our uh, county manager um, and looking at what we just went through with the, the health insurance. Um, you know, when we're faced with 18% of 18% increase in cost in health insurance and the, the innovative way with the commissioner's guidance on it and working with the 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 uh, HR staff um, and, and county manager. And I know you can't, it's hard to do anything and have 100% agreement that it was a good thing, but you know, the majority of the employees that I talked to uh, really appreciate the way that it was handled dealing with the health insurance problem. And this is another issue to tackle. I, guess. I think this is, it, it gives me hope that, that uh, we'll see a good outcome on that as well. Uh, based on past performance. So. Any other discussion on that? Johnny, you want to head off the telephone? That's right, you think you're the opening for that. Yeah. Yes, I talked to Jason several times, but I think I mentioned you up about And I don't know that much about it, but I have done some checking with the Affordable Health Care Act. We're going to be like it, don't like it, if you're through the state. Okay, you did open up some avenues that we can negotiate with our state insurance companies. I talked to uh, two of I was in uh, Congress and asked them, I said, in the event that our county chose to be out administration of our health care system, what would you say? First thing he said, well, what you need to do, go back and give the county manager HR on the committee. Have many commissioners on it, have two or three of the employees, good representative on it. Go in and take your health package you have and go to it for every benefit right down the line. But this is what we want, and we've changed.
you do, we stay with it, whatever. Actually, once you write the, the books and notes, whatever you got, then notify your interim carrier. Say, look, we want to sit down at the table with you. This is what we got to offer. This is what we want you to offer. This is what we want you to minister for our people. And we've got intentions of bidding it out. Go he said, it's going to take you three or four months to work through the book. He said, some people would call their, their carry now, let them come in and sit down with you. And then he said, by the first two years, at least for the first two years, you should have made known that you want to bid out your administrative service. Because we're self insured. We pay for somebody to minister the policy for us. Okay, it cost us on the amount of programs we put in it. Some of the programs in it, you want to either do better or less or whatever, but he said it would be worth the time to go through the whole program with the group. And it's going to be time consuming. He said very time consuming. But he feels like two got the tough. He said, yes. Excuse me. He said, there's going to be a savings and there's going to be more government agents out there doing the same thing you're doing because he's already heard around the country. So, you know, I just, uh, a possibility is that it's going to be worth it. Are we going to have time to do it? If we're going to do it, we need to, you know, really make a good faith effort. Or are we satisfied with what we got now? We haven't changed benefits except from one plan to the HSA, HSA, is that right? And we did that because, and we put in the the dollar amount, we put the dollar amount in so we encouraged the employees to move over to it because we knew we'd going away with the old plan. Okay? But also we added to it with the, uh, with the program for the diabetic because we want to encourage them to get better. Okay? But there's the stuff out there we can do to save money. And just like you said, well, $85,000 was from the federal government for the paying of the affordable health care. That's us. Before, yeah, that, 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 that's all for that. But still again, the, uh, but still again you know, that's something mandated. And if we mandate it, we pick it up with mandate the federal government the state. But um, I personally think that they can be a saving if we get two or three companies bidding on And uh, if you look at the thing, we spend over $500, we get a bid on it anyway. And it's something we've never done that I know of. Okay. Can I ask? I could, I'd like to ask a question. And, and Allison, you may not know this off the top of your head. What is the cost for us to administer, for paid blue cross to administer our health insurance? I heard 18%. Yeah. Does that sound like a good number? Someone told me, I don't know where I got it from. I can certainly find out. Yeah, I would be, I would pull a number, I'll be pulling a number off the top of my head, but that's a, that's a number in terms of our administration. Would that, with the number I got higher on? I, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know who I was talking to to give me that number. I don't, I don't know. It wasn't me. But, it, but I know I know that uh, insurance companies have not had the ability to work across state lines up until now. I think I think that and, and you're getting ready to make some comments, Mr. Chair, and I bet y'all. Um, I I um, I think Commissioner Hutchins makes a great point to suggest that that on a on a on a periodic basis, in every department, we need to look at who, who our vendor relationships are with. <coughs> we need to step back and ask the question, how long has this vendor been servicing this contract? How long has it been since it's bid out, been bid out? And we've got to keep the relationship where we feel like that we're getting competitive cost numbers. Uh, I would ask the board to allow us to examine that this year, but not not with the call of going out for bids, simply because I've got serious concerns about our work capacity right now. Johnny, 
mentioned several times, it's a lot of work. It's a significant amount of work when you consider taking bids and changing the administrative oversight of your plan. It's a significant amount of work. And what's going on right now, just off the top of my head, is we're making a significant transition with our wellness program. And it's affecting all 750 people to some degree. There's a significant amount of education. We had 31 meetings with county employees in the month of May and June to make sure that they understand how the benefits were being changed. And so I would ask the board to allow us to basically say, we want you to flag this because this is something we want you to look at at the appropriate time and give us a little more time because managing the changes with our health insurance, uh, our relationship with our wife, the, the, the diabetes prevention program, the wellness program, also asking our human resources department to come back with some pay plan suggestions by late fall winter. That's heavy lifting. And, and so I think if we were to try to take another big project and put it in the air right now, I'm not really sure we've got the capacity to do it. We might have to look at outsourcing it and get some outside assistance with it. But if you would just say to us, at the appropriate time, we'd like to take a look at it. We can be responsive to that and try to fit it in. But we may be a while off just because we just don't have with the current staff we've got. We don't have the ability to do it right now because we're just trying to do. We've got a really ambitious set of commissioner's goals, and, and, I, and that's something that we're going to take a second to talk about today. And I hear Commissioner Hutchins, and I think it's a great question, and it's a great, it's a great, it's a great part of being a good organization is saying how long has it been since we've seen how competitive the rates are. But I don't know that we can do it right now. And that's not an excuse. It's just there's a lot going on. Plus, you want to do a transition in the finance office also. And he brought that up, and, and uh, yes. Uh, I, I mean, well, no, I was well, when, I, when I talk, and I, when I talk to John Hedden, Hedden says they would do it for us. Mm -hmm. And also, that was, he said, the best way to do it. He said, if you don't have time, you don't have the staff, you can also tell the company, say, look, we can bid out the same service, we're not changing nothing and give each one of the opportunity to come in and you would stay with whatever program you had, you would stay with your wellness programs or whatever and still, again, he says you will save money if you just take the handbook and say, look, this is what we want to do, these programs we got going, you continue the service we got and still get it out. Well, I, I've got 16 years experience in the insurance business. Now, I don't do commercial health insurance, but I do individual health insurance. I know from, from an individual standpoint, the Affordable Care Act did not address the buying insurance across state lines. It sure did. No, not as an individual. Well, an individual in North Carolina. It does for individuals and it but, also for businesses too. Well, I don't know what the statute I, I, was. I just tell you, if you, if you live in North Carolina, yeah. you can't. I can't sell someone in South Carolina an individual health insurance. Now it may be different, and I'd like I'll I'll find that out for you. Uh, I'll talk to some some of our Well, the two the two companies I talk for are still in North Carolina, but they're if they're in North Carolina, then they could. But, um, but it, it, it is a time extensive thing. Yeah. I I even though I don't do group health insurance, I have worked with group agents where they've asked me to come in and help them do a census, and it is I mean it's a, it's a time intensive thing. I thought it, I might be looking at this kind of too simply, but when I have people come into my business and say, let me look at your insurance and see if I can offer it to you less expensive, they do, they do the labor. And, and then, then, then they yeah. come in and make an offer and you can yeah. compare it then. Yeah. Right. But, uh, I mean, go ahead and Look at the company you want to look at and say, hey, would you come look at us? Tell us what you have to offer. Then compare it against what you have. And our staff's not involved in having to do any of it. We come down to, if there's a, a, a very big difference between what one company A versus company B, explain to me what the difference is or how you're able to do it for that, that much less or whatever. But, um, these companies are coming to me and they're saying, let me look at your health insurance and, and do a comparison. And they, they do the legwork. 
I think what we're looking at is someone just to minister the plan. Yeah. They're not going to change our health plan just to minister the plan. Right. Yeah, but they're going to make give you an offer. Yeah, they make an offer. I said, I, it's kind of simple for me. I, I, whatever, you know, they, uh, I look at the dollars and cents out of it and nuts and bolts. Well, I guess that's the way I look at dollars and cents. They come and give us the same thing. And, even if they do it for 10%, somebody comes in and says, we'll do it for 9%. That's a big saving. Well, I, I'll push back a little bit in the, in the spirit of just trying to have a good discussion. Uh, there's a customer service component of it. Uh, when we did this last work, our last work, I had 23 vendors, 23 vendors, as I recall, bid, submit bids. They all want to meet with you to go over specifically how your health insurance works. And so staff has to sit with vendors uh, during a pre-bid process and explain, this is how our health insurance works. This is how we administer it. Here's the relationship with our staff. Here are all the nuts and bolts of it. Here's how HSA works. And so the vendors have to understand how it works. Then, in our case, we've received 23 bids. You have to go through all those bids. You have to do your due diligence on, on checking references, the customer service. Then there's the switchover. And with 750 to 800 people, if you do identify a vendor that's going to take it over, you're going to go through a switchover process. And that's, that's Allison, you may have some experience with that, but that's, that's a lot of heavy lifting. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, it is. And I think that it can also involve employees having to change doctors, potentially. So, you know, it, it can have some significant upheaval. Well, and I say, and you know, we lost some more people, and I apologize. I just say that we're prepared, we're prepared to look into it, but if you could just work with us on, on how we, it sounds like Commissioner Hutchins has had some, some discussions with vendors and such who are always interested in, in looking at trying to, to get your business, and that's, and that's a good thing. That competitiveness is a good thing. If we could just have a chance to maybe examine that and maybe work into our work plan or maybe come back to the board and say, okay, if you're interested in it, this is how it might work and give you some more information on it. Even if, if it were, you know, fall to late fall of the year. And, and, and if the board asks us, you know, no, by, by the budget process, we want to get it out. We'll do that, but we may have to sit down and look at workload and come back and try to negotiate some other things that would come off, or maybe be pushed to the back burner. Pleasure, Mark. I guess I'm like going. I just look at the numbers and don't look at uh, some of the work. And to me, thinking so, okay, if you tell. Blue Cross Blue Shield, we tell Edna, we, we tell Humana. Humana is probably different because they've got a different market. I know one guy lived beside him, he used to go to Shelby, now he's got to go to Gastonia. But to me, whoever would come and say, look, we don't want to change nothing. No doctors, no nothing. We, we pay the bill. I mean, what, what is there to changing in? Reinvent the wheel if you're not going to change nothing, except it could be a tremendous savings just to ask somebody to take a look at it. I, I think I'm hearing the person that's being charged to look at this say he's got a full plate. And well, I, I understand what full plate is. But still, I'm saying even that, if somebody comes in, we don't have to put nothing down on his plate. But they I can call the day and have somebody in here tomorrow and do all the value you want to and never have to talk to you. We don't have to talk to you. You take our handbook. You may call some of y'all and say, what do you want? And it doesn't matter to me, but there's a savings there if we pursue it. I think uh, I've had a little experience with that. And, <clears throat> and I know I think you have to be very careful when you change administrators or carriers because it seems to me like a big portion of them always hide something. That's not that's that's not the same. What you're saying I agree with, John. If it's the same package per package per item, then that that's that's 
no problem. I think what Allison said is uh, there is a very valid point if you happen to get into a process where you start changing doctors and all this stuff, it can cause all kinds of upheaval. And I don't think that's what you're yeah. asking about. We're asking about, as everything stands now, what are comparative prices? Keeping everything as it is right now. Is that, is that, is that right? I think what Jeff said is probably late fall. Yeah. Early mm -hmm. year, we can readdress it. We can come and back. And if we so choose to, then we still have the choice by the first part of the year to call in someone and say, look, leave it the way we got it. Don't change nothing. But are you interested in bidding on uh, management? I, I, think we should look at, I think we should look at, from, from every so many years, look at insurance, like you're saying, to see if things have changed. But I would also think that they also would want them to see if there's any other package that they could offer us, which would be the time consuming part. And some of these carriers do have. Even when they manage it, they have their own network of doctors and what processes and pay plans that they have set up. And that's what Eddie's talking about. There might be a big change on the employees, too, and, and the doctors that they use. Well, what you're saying is that you, you know, they're, they're going to bid on it, but they're not going to come back and say, you've got to change doctors because we're changing your network. No, we wouldn't change anything. <laughs> I feel more comfortable to you if. if if you're okay with us waiting until yeah. fall, yeah, that, that's fine. It, it, most most insurance carriers are still really. I mean, there's a lot to the Affordable Care Act, and a lot of them are still waiting, doing fine and stuff that they didn't know was there. Uh, just whenever it comes up, and they're fine yeah. issues. So, they're from my understanding, from what I've seen, a lot of them don't even want to talk to you until you get you close to a renewal or something. Anyway, that seems to be the first year. Yeah. Calendar year, person of calendar year. Yeah. So, so clarify the commissioner's direction here, and and it would really be more, much more of an HR function than, than a county manager's office function. It would be by the, by late fall winter time, in, in coordination with when the work's being done on the pay pay plan analysis, come back to the board and speak to the board about if we if we were to go out and bid out. The administration of our health plan, what would that process look like, and how quickly can we start that process? Is, that, is that okay? Yeah, that's good. Is that okay? And then we, we'll be prepared to come. Allison can research that and say, this is how quickly we can do it. Here's what it would look like, and here's what we recommend. To we can certainly come back and bring that out. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, Commissioners, the next two topics, we're going to kind of turn this over to our county manager and, and go over an update of the, the commissioner's goals um, and discussion of next year's goals. And this is going to be kind of a, a, a high level view, overall view of this, and, and uh, um, we'll need to set a, a time sometime in the future to, to, to in the near future, for us to uh, uh, dig deeper into these goals and also look at our, our department manager's goals as well and how they correlate to uh, our discussion. So, Jeff, can I turn this over to you? You've got, you've got a front back page that Kerry provided to you earlier today that basically talks to his 13, 14 strategic goal update. We have added other progress update. Kerry and I have added some things that have occurred maybe in the last 60 to 90 days. Now, I don't know that there's any need to go through any of these one by one, but if board members have questions about any of these, either your top priorities or your goals in any of the focus areas, if you would flag those today, we certainly will give you an update on it. If you've got things that you asked about that we're not sure about, a good example is a second ago, had what we pay Blue Cross Blue Shield to administer, we're going to get that information to get back to you. You might have questions about some of these goals that we're not able to give you specific information on. Um, I think it's healthy at the end of the fiscal year to try to measure your progress. Uh, so we've really tried to take a look at, and Carrie made a good point, she said a lot of this stuff we've been working on for six months. We've not been working on full, full fiscal year, and she's absolutely correct. Some things that are on here you folks were pushing hard uh, even before the start of this fiscal year, 
but a lot of the stuff that's on here we've made progress on in the last six months. There's several items on here that we've not made progress on or we may not have made adequate progress on. And so any, any questions from you, uh, anything that you would like to flag, uh, uh, let me know. I'll turn it back over to you, Jason, to see if there's anything specific that the board wants us to talk about or elaborate on today or flag for a future discussion. Is there anything specific on here? I, I, I know we didn't come today to, to, I mean, probably, I don't think any of us come today with new goals and things like that. We're looking at adding on to this yet. Um, but we would like to schedule a meeting in the near future, and I'll get with um, um, Carrie and see if we can schedule that and, and work with all of your schedules on that to schedule time where we can look at our um, strategic goals. But anything in particular today that y'all want to bring out on this on our strategic goals? Mr. Chairman, uh, the one comment I'd like to make and before we discuss any of the goals is just kind of remind everybody, it, it, remind everyone that we have a new manager on board. We have a new finance director on board. We have uh, Carrie's promotion. We have a new clerk. Uh, there's a lot going on. And while they're addressing the goals, there's really not been much time in between all of these activities that's been going on to, to give them the opportunity that they need to work with, they get their positions in place. And, and I just think that probably uh, on some of these goals that we're ahead, some are behind, but that we, unless there's some just major additions, just let this float till everybody gets comfortable where they're at. I mean, we got, we got plenty of things we want done. Sure. Right. But since we've had such big changes, let's let, let's let that flood work as well. Sure. Uh, I'm sure staff appreciates that as well. So they have, they have been very good. And, and it's amazing the amount of work that they put into this with all the changes that have been going on. So just, uh, but I think, so I think, sort of feedback what you're saying, all this stuff, the stuff, stuff that we're discussing today, we're not trying to jump up and down and say, you know, this stuff tomorrow now, you know. We're, just, we're trying to say stuff that we're sort of looking out into the future that we'd like to address, but it's, it's not that it has to be done tomorrow. There's a lot of activity out there, but um, there's a lot of people still need to be get comfortable in their position. And um, and I think things will just come along real smoothly after that. And my time got to your leave, I'm just trying to say. Thank you. Any other cards? I could have given me another appeal. I don't care. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank if they get time, and have who is assigned to it, they don't have to do it. Let's look at changing our website. Since Johnny and I came back, I've been on, I know, half a dozen states' websites and their, their particular county because of this dozen thing. And there are some friendly websites out there that make you want to sit there and play and look all over all the time and see what they're doing. Whereas, I don't see some information and I just see just too much cut and dry on ours. Uh, it come out with a little video at the beginning, you know, quit hurting up. I think, well, I think you, I, you, you the, the, the service director, and that's what they alluded to, that service director had a lot to do with the information stuff on that website. And I guess there are a lot of people in the old school, you know, when it comes to technology, so well, we depend on somebody else. Not making excuses, but you know, and two, that might be something that we do look for a coordinator to make sure 
Hey, we got one right here behind. Where's he at? He can do it. Yeah. And I, uh, the question I was going to ask, because uh, I think, uh, no question, websites are extremely popular and ex very, very necessary. And I think Kristen will echo this. Sometimes you get a first look through the website and you don't get a second look at economic development. So, you know, do we, do we have the manpower internally to address what needs to be done with a website or do we need to consider a, a outside professional firm to come in and assist us with a elevated more attractive, as Ronnie says, more cut, more friendly, more friendly yeah. website. Um, it, 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 it is, it is a very, it is a very important issue, and it's very important in economic development. It's extremely important. And that, that's a good point. You want to talk to me? I know the town manager of HR all got a load on their plate, but if we get to that point, and I think. As well said, then do we need to look at some outside sources to give you a hand or give her a hand? Because I know there's sources out there that if you choose to reach out for anything, for it from payroll to any structure, that there's somebody out there that come in and give us a helping hand that may put us way ahead and may not cost that many dollars, like say it was time and money. Okay. I guess we, 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 we've seen that so far. And Two videos where someone outside is paying them in yeah. and did a very professional job. And it takes the burden off our people, even though I'm sure they got the capability and they probably know more about the county. Right. But that being said, uh, those who have the capability within the county and know the county can help right. the professional. There may be an opportunity too if we if we do look at outside an outside agency to come in and help us with our website. Jeff and I were just in conversation with uh, the chamber, and they're they're struggling with the same thing. They've got a, a really an out of date website that needs needs work done to it. They must be opening the yeah. 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 We may but, uh, maybe an opportunity there where we can get a two version. Well, I, I guess the, the word I have, this young lady, when as she was growing up, um, uh, I, I saw her quite often, and she always had, this, I call it this, bubbly personality, I and mean, she's always you know, full of energy and want things to go. I want, like some of the websites that I have looked at, I want people, when they get on the website, they really want to go through and look and see what's here and what's there. And but, so it has to be, you know, well, all the best it's got to be very, very, very friendly. Yeah. 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 But anyway, it's about. There you did lost, right? Yeah. I, I think it's a great guidance for us. That's something that, that I think that we need to walk away from here today and hear that there's a strong board interest under the community education and public outreach for us to look with the help of an outside company or outside expertise, whatever that whatever that means, to say, what can we do to make significant strides with how our website looks and how our public interacts with it, how, 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 how it pulls information off of it, the, 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 the brand, the presentation, the look of it, the, the friendliness of it. We can do that. that. That's something that we can that we can work with IT and that we can sit down and say, okay, this is a big this is a big a big goal. We always to have a link to do the video we can not develop. Mm -hmm. Even even with American mm -hmm. Legion World City, the link yeah. down there, yeah. they can go and watch the You watch may have had the expertise in the college that would be willing to do a program for us. I don't know. That's the only thing I like to change. To my, own, my own personal opinion, because we we've gone we've gone through this with the chamber, we've gone through it with the college, we've gone through it with the legion, and we have struck out just about every time we turned around until we brought quote an outside man that really knew what they were doing, and it seemed like once we got got a hold of that person, whoever it might be, things just started moving. You know? Yeah. Got it. Okay.
Well, that's that's all we had on the agenda for today. Unless y'all got something else planned, we're we're going to have skip it. You mean they're what? Is this what you expected? Everybody, everybody, get what they need to have me today. No, I wasn't really. I was just looking at it. I really don't care. Okay, which commission is while we're reading before we finish up? I guess we need a motion to adjourn this meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. And a second. All those in favor?